So far, we have been looking at how sin works. We've kind of been reverse engineering it from the top down and then from the ground up. We saw that sin is not a direct result of temptation, but is actually founded in our desires because you can't be tempted to do something that you don't actually want. Then we learned that desires come from a sense of lacking because you don't desire something you already have. There has to be something empty or missing in you in order to create a desire for it. And then we learned in the last session that the sense of lacking comes from unbelief. The reason we feel like we have something missing in us is because we don't believe that God is good enough to give it to us. And so what we have to now see is not just how sin works, which is starting in unbelief and working all the way through to sin. What I want us to do is understand how holiness works. How do we not only stop sinning, but start actually doing holy and good and righteous things. Because just stopping an action isn't really what God calls us to. He calls us to a life filled with good works, full of holy living to his glory. So what I want to do is I want to re-engineer this chart and show what it looks like whenever we replace unbelief with belief. So this is where we're going to start. We're going to start with belief. Whenever we actually believe that God is who he says he is, that he will provide. Whenever we believe that God is good, that he is not going to leave us in the lurch. Whenever we reflect on the gospel and we know that God meets us in the most dire circumstances, our hearts are changed to cleave to God because of everything he's done for us in Jesus. So what happens then? After we put our belief, our faith in Jesus, something comes and it actually is still a lack We still lack something, but this belief that leads to lack is very different from the lack that comes from unbelief because we're not lacking something that we're going to look to sin to fill. Instead, what we're going to realize is now that we've believed that Jesus is good enough and is beautiful enough and will save us, we want more of him. We realize that we lack all of Jesus. And this is a perpetual pursuit. We realize that for all eternity, we're always going to want more and more and more of the goodness of God. There's always going to be more of his character and presence and goodness that we lack. And it's going to send us on a pursuit. And so what comes after lack? Well, it is desires. But this time we're not desiring sin. We're desiring God. We want more of God than we had before. So all this lack that we feel leads to a desire for God. Our our hearts are changed. We don't want sin anymore. We don't desire what it has to offer anymore. Its promises are vain to us. Instead, we want more of God. So it changes our desires. So when sin comes to us and tries to attach itself to our desires, temptations aren't coming out of it. Instead, what comes out of it is an opportunity. This is an opportunity not to sin, but to actually do something good. This is an opportunity not to say no or yes to sin, but to say yes to God. This is an opportunity for holiness, for righteousness. Those places in your life that you were dreading, that you didn't want to enter into because they were the arenas in which you were always tempted and you always fell into sin. Whenever you believe that God is good enough and you want to feast on him because you feel like there's more of him that you want and your heart is changed to desire him more than you desire sin, what happens when you enter into these arenas that used to be filled with temptation? You actually create an opportunity to do something different. And that opportunity is obviously not sin. It is actually holiness. Whenever we believe that God is who he says he is, whenever we realize that we want more of God than we formerly had, whenever our desires are changed to constantly be pursuing more and more of God, whenever what used to tempt us is changed into opportunities to say yes to God, sin goes away. There's not a place for it in our lives anymore. And instead, what comes in are these opportunities for holiness. This is how God wants to rewire your hearts. This is how he wants to change you. This is how he wants you to battle sin. He wants you to revel in and rejoice in the truth of who he is in the gospel. Because what that will do is it will change who you are from the bottom up. It will change your unbeliefs into beliefs. It will change your feelings of lack that you used to try to fill with sin into a feeling of lack for him that you'll constantly be wanting to fill with more of him. It's like those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We want more and more of God. 
This will change what you desire. You won't want the things that you used to desire, things like sin. You're going to want more of God because he is going to satisfy that new lack born out of new beliefs. And what that's going to do is it's going to undercut temptation from your life. Those places that were tempting aren't going to be tempting anymore. Instead, they're going to be opportunities for you to say yes to God. And then ultimately what will happen is what we've tried to figure out this whole time is how do we stop sinning? Well, we don't only stop sinning. We replace them with holy actions. In, in, in those darkest corners of your life, God doesn't want you to just sit there languishing and saying no and like battening down the hatch and just trying to stifle out any action whatsoever. He wants to infiltrate those places and actually repurpose them, not into a place where you just say no and it's a vacant battlefield. He wants to turn that battlefield into a place where something holy and good and beautiful can happen, maybe for the first time. So I want to encourage you, exhort you, I want to beg you to allow the gospel to rewire your heart. I want you to understand that you don't sin just because you are particularly tempted to sin. You sin because you desire sin. You sin because there are lacking places in your heart that you believe sin will fill in better. You sin because you don't believe that God is who he says he is. You sin because you aren't treasuring the gospel. You sin because you do not believe that Jesus is more valuable and beautiful and precious and satisfying and pleasurable to you than any other thing this world has to offer. You sin because you don't believe the gospel. If you want to stop sinning, you have to address it where it lies, which is in the depths of your heart. And the only thing in the cosmos that can reach that deep into your heart is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because only the gospel of Jesus Christ can turn your unbelief into belief because he died to save you and remake you. Hey, my name is David Bowden with Spoken Gospel. It's the vision of Spoken Gospel to speak the gospel out of every corner of scripture. We try to do that with teaching videos like these. This one is about my book, Rewire Your Heart, and you can find out more about it by clicking this link here. This is also not the first video in this series. If you want to go back to the beginning, we invite you to watch the first video here. You can also support our ministry by clicking down here, and we would please always invite you to subscribe.